Rod and Style Television presents The Blue Martian Starring Zach Parks Along with his 1928 Ford Watch as he restores it into a 1960s East Coast hot rod From outer space Hey guys, we just got something really badass in from Spotlight Customs. Let's open this up and show you what it is. Now check this out. You cannot just get this anywhere. These valve covers are pretty unique. These are awesome. Look how pretty those are. That's gonna look so good on the Blue Martian. It gives you that real 60s feel. Nice fins. Not just like the typical China style speedway fins, uh, cast aluminum. Uh, this is gonna be a lot stronger than your stamped steel valve covers, but nothing is gonna look this cool in this 60s right here. Also, we got this really nice t-shirt, Spotlight Customs t-shirt. Check that out. And they gave us a little sticker pack. This is a badass logo, I really like this then obviously I'm a Roadster fan, so I love this Roadster stickers. Make sure you check out Spotlight Customs and the badass products they got like this. Okay, so I had to do some work behind the scenes, uh, something I've been trying to avoid of doing um, in this build series. I want to show you guys everything. But I came in here late the other night, <clears throat> just hanging out, relaxing, uh, you know, at the end of the night, and um, I was ready to mount the front part of the bed. And before I did that, I wanted to make sure everything was square, because this is a big cut open box. It can move around in all, every single direction you can think of. And uh, so, I was gonna square it off, clamp down the front of it and actually mount it so it doesn't move, then build my bracing. <clears throat> Since I know my frame is good and true and it's strong, you could do stuff like that. You can mount it to the frame, move it around, get it where it's square, bolt it down, <clears throat> then brace it right on the frame. <clears throat> so what I found out when I came in here late one night that uh, this thing was like untrue and unsquare in every single direction you could possibly think of this bed. The front of the bed is wider than the back of the bed, so it gets narrow. Um, the, so if you measure just one side, the front to the back, it was both leaning backwards like this. The front and back was both leaning backwards, so the whole thing had to get pushed forward. Um, man, it was a pain in the butt. So every single direction that, that this thing was unsquared, untrue, it was. So that was a real pain in the butt. but. Um, after a lot of moving and bending and prying, I finally got it close to square. It's like maybe a little little bit more than a sixteenth out of being square, but it took a lot to get it to that point. Um, some of the bracing is rusted out. I had to cut the whole back bracing out. And uh, I don't know, I might change up what I wanna do with it. I don't know yet. My gas tank is six and a half inches tall. So I can bring the whole floor up quite a bit and have my filler neck closer 
to uh, my cover. So this is gonna have a pleated cover over it. Um, I might have it, the bed, just high enough that that filler neck sticks out of my pleated cover so I don't have to do anything except for unscrew the cap. I thought maybe I was gonna have to undo the buttons on one side and fill up the gas. I think I changed my mind to get the floor high enough that my pleated cover comes right over the gas tank and the pleated cover is cut out around the filler neck. <clears throat> so there is no unbuttoning it and button it back up because this is gonna get buttons, no fancy tunnel cover lift or anything like that, real simple. So that's what I'm gonna do, that's the plan. And uh, I'm probably gonna bring the floor up in the bed quite a bit. I'm gonna use some square tubing. <clears throat> I'm gonna use some square tubing. Then um, probably just, I might just leaven gauge the whole floor, just one flat sheet. It's pretty heavy, but if you think about this truck, this bed, this, this floor, this thing weighs nothing. Getting a little bit of more extra weight in the back is probably a good idea. And uh, that whole thing's gonna be covered with a pleated cover. Then the floor will be pleated also. So, you know, I wanna pleat this thing to death. That, that's, that's the idea, just a little bit of fun that way. So, when you open up the pleated cover for any reason, the whole floor is pleated as well. So there's no reason why I need to do fancy beads set up, uh, you know, 16 gauge, 20 gauge with a bunch of beads all over it. I'm probably just gonna flat sheet it with some 11 gauge. I have plenty of that. So that'll give me my strength. So what I could do is get some square tubing one by one, box that whole thing in, lock it into the square that I have it down to now. That'll make the bed way stronger because it has to come off probably two, at least two more times, at least two more times, if not more. You guys know how it is when you're uh, restorate. You guys know how it is when you're doing a restoration on something. Um, it goes apart and back together quite a few times. Um, so that's just, it is what it is. I need to get that square and strong. So when I take it back off and put it back uh, on the ground, it doesn't want to move around on me. So before that comes off, I'm probably going to do the floor or at very, very least um, the square tubing structure, at least get this thing back to being strong again. So. It is what it is, guys. We'll keep knocking it out. close to where the filler neck sticks out but I still have all these wires here 
I have a rollover vent there, so I still want to hold it down. And I'll bolt it from underneath. I need to crimp everything down to see if my idea is going to work. anywhere to even to put wood so I'm going to jack it up with the jack okay a little bit of cuss words and I finally got everything where I want it so I have a two uh, two by one here in the front and a two by one here in the back the tanks gonna mount up from the bottom the way that I'm gonna be able to get the tank in and out of the truck is I'm about to weld these tabs on here to this two by uh, two by one here and it's gonna bolt into this one by one right here so I'll put a nut inside this weld a nut inside that and it'll bolt right to that so really simple gas tank will be able to come in and out which hopefully I don't have to take it out other than for paint so that's why I need to make it where it's removable uh, it'll just bolt up right here like that a couple bolts all the way across a couple bolts all the way across right here um, the ones on the front are going to be a little bit harder to get to, honestly. That's just going to be a pain in the ass, but that's okay. Not everything is perfect at every corner. And uh, I think this is good to uh, weld these tabs on my removable bar here. Drill some holes and get this bar actually bolted in. And I'll be ready to mount the gas tank. And I'll be ready to do the floor. And... Uh, I know I said I'd probably do 11 gauge because I have a whole bunch of it. I'm just going to buy some thinner sheet metal just, just because 11 gauge is overkill and that's a lot of weight back here. So yeah, I'm just not going to do, I'll probably do, um, I don't know, maybe 16 gauge. Now that I have this crossbar in here, one bead roll right there in the, on the sides, it'll be strong enough for anything. One bead roll there. So uh, it's still not a bunch of work. Um, I think I want to try to make this out of one piece. I don't know yet. Yeah, if I make this out of one piece, I can make the whole floor unbolt. So that'll be nice. The whole floor will unbolt and it'll bolt across right there. Be pretty straightforward, pretty simple, strong. And uh, one by one, then two, two, two by ones. This is a pretty strong box. This thing isn't going to flex or move anywhere. So, yeah. Let's knock this out, then uh, I'll feel pretty good about today's work.
is partially executed. I got the bolts bolted in. I just need to put tabs on this side, drill and put bolts on this side too. And uh, if the gas tank was steel, I'd probably weld this to the gas tank and let it just be its own piece. Uh, but gas tank's aluminum, so they'll get through bolts on this and a couple pain in the ass bolts up here to get to, but it'll be strong, way stronger than it's ever been probably. So I think it's turning out pretty good. Got the bed all braced up. I got a mount for my gas tank. Um, I got everything in welding primer because I, uh, if any of you guys actually follow me, um, you know I live in Virginia. Humidity is really, really bad. And for me, I personally want to do better about getting things in primer sooner than you know what I've done in the past. Just because a week, maybe two weeks, everything starts flash rusting pretty quick here. Even though I have. <laughs> multiple air conditioners. I really need to put a dehumidifier in my shop. It would help me a lot, but um, I think this is a good spot here where we're at. So the bed is perfectly square. It's perfectly centered on the frame. It's completely mounted. Uh, then gas tank's mounted. I just need to move it left or right uh, to center it, then run my bolts through the cross bracket that we made. Then uh, I think everything's turning out really well. I like it. I like this gas tank, nice aluminum gas tank. I have hard lines and I'm going to run all the way to it. So that'll be nice. Um, so this should be a pretty uh, legitimate setup. This is lower than I wanted it. I kind of wanted it to be high enough where I could put a hole in my pleat cover and not have to take the, the cover off every time. But with that sending unit and my rollover, I actually have a uh, rollover check valve. With those two things, I kind of just needed the space a little bit lower. I didn't want that rubbing on my fabric cover that I'm going to make. So uh, it's recessed. I'm going to have to take this side off to get to the gas tank, but that's fine. It is what it is. Uh, it's a cool hot rod. I think it'll be set up pretty nice. And uh, I'm having fun with it. This is awesome. So now that we have this ready to put a floor in it, I'm actually just going to leave it where it's at. And I'm going to go to the uh the the cab on the next episode so the next episode i'm going to show you how i channel floors uh, on model a's super simple anyone can do it um super affordable so not any crazy weld porn stuff guys legitimate hot rod do it in your backyard type stuff this is stuff that you could do it still be professional it still be strong but it's not like most beautiful weld porn thing you've ever seen in your life. That's kind of like the gray area that I like to be in. Um, everything has to be practical from a time frame. So thank you for watching guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you like and enjoy watching this, uh, you can support the build by going rodstyle.com, getting any uh, Blue Martian merch. We'd really appreciate that. Uh, so we can keep building these for you guys. We have this one. We actually have two more after this. So a lot of cool stuff coming up, guys. See you on the next one. Okay, gonna do a little bit of a special addition to this episode. Um, finally getting some parts in for the motor. I wanna mock it up just to give myself a little bit of motivation, a little bit of excitement. I love this kind of stuff. So we got some badass valve covers from Spotlight Customs. Then we have the actual intake that's gonna go on this motor. So I just wanna throw it on there to see what it looks like and uh, I can't wait to show off these valve covers. These are really bitching.
that's the setup. These valve covers from uh, Spotlight Custom Accessories are gorgeous. You can buy valve covers anywhere, but you can't buy valve covers like this anywhere. Uh, thin like this, put some pinstriping down the middle and stuff. This is going to look super 60s. I love it. Um, I'm actually a dealer for early Ford Speed Parts. I bring that up only because some guys who already know me are going to give me a hard time for running this style air filter. This whole kit, it comes with the carburetors, air filters, and intake. Um, probably I'm going to use it because they're brand new air filters. I'm not going to just set them on the shelf. I'll use these, but then I'll replace them eventually with one of my speed parts. Um, it's going to show what we have, get your guys' opinion, what do you think looks the best. So I have these frog scoops in stock, has this cool screen on it, looks good like that. Got to adjust the pins here, it'll fall down flush, but that's something that'll look good. Or should I go with Velocity Stack, this other one that I sell on my website. So check that out. Which one do you think looks the best? Let me know. Either way around, I'm going to use these air filters so they get dirty, then I'll switch over to one of mine. So this thing's going to look cool. Man, it's hard to beat good polished aluminum compared to this cheap plastic painted stuff. You can see the night and day difference. I was getting ready to, this, to close out on this video, but man, these look way better than anything that this thing come with, these cheap filters. But... Still gonna run them, still gonna run them for now. But anyways, thank you for watching guys. Thank you for indulging on my on this build, this collaboration that we have. We're all having a blast with it. I think it's turning out pretty cool. Um, I have fun every episode. Uh, I'm excited to put the floor in. I have all the parts back there to put the floor in and get this solid and mounted. Then I'm gonna take it all the way back apart and paint the frame. So this is going good. Thank you for watching guys. See you on the next episode. Yeah.